In this assignment, you're going to create a table-based site. Here's a very simple sample. I'd like to talk a little bit about the process that I used in creating the page. This site, and we're going to look at the HTML. Oops, nope, that's the CSS. The site is based on a table. So you see I've got my normal head tags. And the, the table forms the structure of the inside of the page. My table is set to a width of 960 pixels. And you'll notice that I have IDs for the different sections of the page because that allows me to assign cascading style sheets to set the styling. Now, typically, historically, you probably wouldn't have done that. But this is the right way to style things now. We're just using the table layout to show you what was historically done in case you run into it. So we have my table row up here at the top, which is actually two columns merged together, TD call span 2, contains the text, travels with Seamus, and has the ID naming it head section. And that's my top row, single cell merged, spanning two columns. Then I have two cells that form the bottom of my table. In this table row, I have a table TD with a width of 190 and a via line of top. So that's setting this column right here. It's 190 pixels wide, and the vertical alignment, via line, makes everything float to the top where the default would be in the middle here. I've given it the ID of link section, and I'll show you how I styled that in a few minutes. Then I have three links in here with just breaks between them. Now, when I created this page, I created all of that and left this part blank and just saved it as each of the three files, index, Hershey, and food, because I don't need to change these again for the other two pages that I created. The only content that changes is in my content area. And in here, all my content goes inside this single table cell. And these are all things that you've seen before. You have a bulleted list, you have some information, and you have some pictures. Now, I've done some interesting things with the CSS here, and I'll get into that in just a minute. But you'll notice my pages are almost exactly the same on the top and left sides, and the background doesn't change. And I'm going to show you how I've styled all of that. The other thing I want you to notice is that my images have borders, but only on two sides. I was sort of creating a faked out um, drop shadow. You could have some arguments on the color and how authentic that it looks, but it's just showing you how you can do a drop shadow effect with a thick border and that you don't have to have a border on every side of the picture. So let's take a look at that CSS. And if you open up my page, right click and view source, you can get to the CSS just by clicking on that link right there. So we have the body, which we sent a, set a default font for the page, and the background color with pretty shade of purple. We have set the H1 with a text align of center and padding of 35 pixels. I didn't set the color here. There's two places I could set it. I could have set it for H1. I actually set it in the ID section for that. This is where I'm setting my image information. Now remember, the content, then if I had padding, padding would go between the content and the border. That's why there's no padding here. I wanted the border next to the image, but I have 25 pixels of spacing around the image in the margin outside of the border to keep my other content so it's not too close. And so I've got a border on the right and a border on the bottom, both five pixels solid, not shade of purple. I have used some CSS to change the colors of my links when I mouse over or click on them. The main page, that's just the big container, the whole table, it's got a margin of zero space auto semicolon, and that will center my table on the page. Border for the table is none, and then I have a background color, which you actually don't see because I put other things on top of it. And then the default text alignment for the entire table is left. Then I have my link section over here, set the font sizes to be slightly larger, 
set the background color, and put in a padding of 10 pixels. So anything in here will be spaced to 10 pixels from whatever's around it. Then I have my head section, and you notice they don't have to be the order they appear on the page, where I've got a background image, Niagara Falls, um, color 609, that's my shade of purple right here, padding of 10 pixels, doesn't really come into play because there's nothing else in here. Set the font here. This has a serif font because with the big H1 tags, it's okay to have things that are serif. Um, text align center and font size. Then in the content portion here, I just set my background color and padding so that there's at least 10 pixels of padding between each of my page elements. So really basic CSS. I don't think you've seen anything new here except for the borders on only part of the images. So to sum up, you're going to create a three-page site. You should start by creating and styling one page, get your table done, get your links in it, get the header in it. When you're that far, do a file save as and name it as whatever you call the other two links. Then you can just change the content center, content in the center there, and voila, you've got a linked three-page site.